Welcome, Facebook viewers. Uh, I'm here, Andy Hum, with Marin Johns. Yay! Queer40.com. Thank you, yes. Hi, everybody. What's the big story in Queer40 th this week? Uh, well, there's a bunch of stuff. I mean, we're in a tsunami of wonderful pride stories, but I, myself, am personally obsessed with this Titanic sub-story. Are you? I, Oh, yes, I'm literally, I, I'm starting to hyperventilate because they've got like, you know, only a few hours of oxygen left and I'm just terrified for them. That's not looking good. Not looking good. Yes. And as usual, it involves a scandal, which is the inept, you know. The do, you mean late, do you mean late capitalism male hubris? Yes. Oh, it's <laughs> Anyway, we have lots of LGBTQ news to go with this week, and we are going to be starting shortly. Yes. Uh, we're going to start with Pride stuff. Yay. Tis the season. Well, I appreciate everybody coming to Facebook which is a platform run by a late stage capitalist, male Cooper Sky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all been a mistake. Let's go back, let's go back. <laughs> let's go back to analog. <laughs> We have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. And I'm Erin Johns. And happy Christopher Street Liberation Day, which is what we call the annual celebra celebration of the uh, Stonewall, so, or marking of the Stonewall Rebellion. But we've got lots of current news. Uh, we've, we've been telling you how Pride events are under attack across the country, but they're also blossoming in some towns for the first time. Yes, and the College Board has stood up to Ron DeSantis's Don't Say Gay Law. And we're going to show you a teacher in Florida telling his school board why he and apparently 50 others in the district are leaving the profession over DeSantis's anti-LGBTQ laws. Anti-trans laws have been blocked in Indiana and Arkansas by federal judges. And an anti-drag law was slapped down in Utah. Uh, polling on LGBTQ issues in some polls has been slipping just a bit after all this assault. And a TV news director in the Midwest has told his staff to cool it on the Pride coverage. Uh, let's talk about the other side, he says. Well, we're going to show you how the producers reacted to that. A Montana man got 18 years on the slammer for trying to kill all the LGBTQ people in a small town. Oh, goodness. And uh, there has been some progress internationally in Estonia, Australia and Poland, surprisingly. Uh, the United States is imposing visa restrictions on anti-LGBTQ Ugandan politicians. And the UK's PM, Rishi Sunak, has been caught on videotape mocking transgender people in a meeting with conservative MPs. And I saw Christian Cooper's uh, Nat Geo Wild series, Extraordinary Birder, uh, uh, which has premiered with a plug for uh, pride in the animal kingdom. There's... there's well there's Chris. And speaking of pride, you know, this is Pride Month. And if you are so moved and you're proud of, uh, of what we do here, uh, we would appreciate it if you would consider uh, a donation to us. Um, you can go to our website at Gay USA TV. There are all kinds of ways to do it. Uh, and uh, Marin and I and Anne and Chris are all, will all be appreciative. And Bill and Rich. Everybody, the whole team. And, and what, what a delight, Chris, is if you didn't catch last week's episode where we're chatting to him about the book, please do go back and look at it. He's a fabulous, uh, such a wonderful, warm guest as well as a, a, as a good host, isn't he, Andy? Yes, and I'll remind you that Anne will be back next week after two 
wonderful weeks with uh, with Marin. And our guest then is going to be Martha Shelley, who was a pre-Stonewall activist. She saw Stonewall. Uh, she saw the rebellion while it was going on, and she got involved right away in the post-Stonewall movement. So let's let's talk about what's going on in pride around the world. Mm. Um, you know, we told you last week about Colorado Springs. What do they call it? Um, uh, Pikes Peak. Pikes Peak. Right. Yes. And how Richard Fierro, there he is in, uh, sitting in the, uh, uh, the uh, car on the right. He was the hero who stemmed the slaughter at Club Q last year. Uh, he was the Grand Marshal. He's a self-described straight Jew who saved countless lives with his bravery. Uh, but we have these pictures now. They had 15,000 people out there, uh, the largest ever. Among them were Sabrina and Jeff Alston marching in this Pikes Peak Pride, holding a picture of their son, Daniel Alston, who was slain in the mass shooting. Uh, the mm. parade was preceded by a memorial uh, ceremony, and billboards were erected with pictures of the five victims of that. Horrible. And let's remember that Fierro, the, the gentleman in the in the car as the Grand Marshal of that parade with his rainbow sash on, he is that man who crossed the bloody dance floor to grab the barrel of the gun and stop that, that massacre. I mean, that's an incredible gesture. His daughter's boyfriend, Raymond Vance, died in the shooting. Um, it, it's a real reminder of, uh, of, of where we can uh, go with pride and also what we're up against, because we can't forget that Colorado was once called the hate state. And has we know it's got you know Lauren Bobert there, and uh, has not always looked upon our communities favorably. Even though now it has a reputation of supporting transgender people, a lot of transgender friends of mine have moved there. Uh, but yeah, this is this is an interesting uh, example of what the United States is going through. I feel uh, hate groups on one side, progress on another. It has also Colorado has one of the oldest uh, in the country anti LGBT hate groups. Uh, called Focus on the Family, I believe, Andy. Isn't that right? So, yes, and you have an update, Focus on the Family, and I, you have an update I, on the case of the Club Q. I do, and the shooter, so uh, the shooter was in a rare conversation with Associated Press uh, this week. Uh, the suspect, who uh, is 23-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich, who does identify as non-binary, has said, I have to take responsibility for what happened. This ha These uh, comments came in a series of calls from jail to Associated Press. Now, some of the victims' families are saying that this seems like a, a plea deal that is to get Aldrich off the death sentence and have it sort of commuted to just life in prison. But we'll see. Uh, it, it is sounding like they are expressing some kind of remorse. But anyway, um, the prosecutors have asked survivors and their families to prepare for the June 26 hearing uh, by writing victim impact statements and, you know, getting ready for the, the possible release of, of horrifying surveillance video. Uh, but anyway, Aldrich faces more than 300 state counts, including murder and hate crimes. Okay. Let's go to Grand Haven, Michigan. I love the headline I saw in this story. Midwest Small Town Pride Festival attracts thousands who reject far-right local politics. Uh, one lesbian couple said they moved there 14 years ago, but it kept their relationship hidden. But last week, they participated in the, this was the first Pride Festival they've had in this area of Michigan. The organizers said they hoped for 500 attendees in a town of 11,000. 4,000 people participated. Uh, wow. The local county council is reactionary and anti-LGBT and denied funds to the Pride Fest um, in, uh, oh, I'm sorry, in uh, in Holland, Michigan, uh, that the previous uh, boards had funded. Uh, one of the movers in Grand Haven was uh, uh, Reverend Jared Kramer, the local Episcopal pastor. Festival yeah. organizers paid for beefed up security after threats, but it was a pride worship service attended mostly by the 50 plus crowd and the Michigan Lieutenant Governor, uh, Gilchrist. I mean, good job. The county is apparently very religious. So, I mean, to them, the, the whole pride celebration is an infringement of their Christian values, really. But uh, it seems they, they pulled this off very nicely this year. And the Holland Pride Festival population, 35,000, is going to be the home of, the, uh, of Betsy DeVos is going to be this weekend. Mm -hmm. Now, in Kentucky, in Corbin on June 3rd, two members of the KKK 
threatened with guns a small LGBTQ rights rally, and the police did not arrest them. They were brandishing guns. Uh, uh, they didn't arrest them. It's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's deeply concerning. They weren't even from the town. Um, police originally contacted the FBI, then they took that post down. Um, and in the weeks that followed, the KKK distributed flyers in Corbin urging parents to take control of their schools, remove all filth from school libraries to gender policies and the presence of men in the, in the, in the restrooms. In other words, the Republican Party platform at this point. And I say that without <laughs> exaggeration. Oh, there's some viral video getting around on TikTok of one of the KKK, one of the one of the guys uh, flashing his membership card. I mean, it's just it's just ridiculous. We always used to say, Andy, that the younger ones would be better, but unfortunately, increasingly more and more young people are going astray onto the, the side of darkness. Goodness but, me! But the really young ones are getting the right message, aren't they? From Sesame Street. Uh, <laughs> been celebrating pride all month standing up for all kids the show is tweeting support on social media in the face of unprecedented attacks on lgbtq kids from republicans recently featured out celebrities like um, uh, ellen billy eichner billy porter lil nas x um, in 2021 they introduced three gay characters to the neighborhood republicans want to cut off their negligible government funding but they failed and I'd like to tell um, Sky News host James McPherson to shut up and sit down because he's actually come out and said that, you know, Sesame Street is indoctrinating and grooming uh, children into the LGBTQ lifestyle. You know, the audience is three to five years of age. Why do we need to teach them these values? Well, Sesame Street did tweet, on our street, we celebrate inclusion, belonging and freedom of authentic self-expression. Happy Pride Month. So if we you can find the, the sexual indoctrination in that, I've got no idea. And we celebrate uh, our diversity and uh, our, our and everything else in the Queer Liberation March. Uh, the fifth one is going to take place in New York this Sunday, June 25th. We're having a rally downtown at 2 p.m. in Foley Square in the Civic Center. We're kicking off the march at 3.30 and marching uptown to Washington Square Park. I'll be there and uh, hope to see you around. Mm. Okay, um, let's let's uh, let's update people on the on the Dodgers. Hmm? Yes, I think so. Uh, the the Dodgers did honor the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence there on Pride Night. Uh, an anti LGBT, but but an anti LGBT Catholic group led a protest outside, claiming the Sisters were an anti Catholic hate group, which they are not, and their costumes are no more ridiculous than many wor many worn by priests and nuns. Uh, for, for, and, I, and I mean that, you know, but yeah. we're in costume, so what? I mean, it's what you do with your heart, and it's what you do with your actions. They're not doing anything obscene. They're not mocking uh, uh, anybody. Um, 49,000 tickets were sold to the Pride Night game. It was a sellout crowd. And when the sisters were honored, there were no boos, and there was much applause. Every player and umpire wore Pride logos on their caps or on their jerseys. and. The five-year-old son of Tom Daly and Dustin Lance Black, Robbie, threw out the first pitch. You can see them up on the big screen there. Um, that's the first time I've seen the kid's face because they always hide his face in their in their Instagram posts, which is a you know probably a good thing to do. But anyway, so it was gay, gay, gay. Hmm. Uh, what about that soccer match uh, between? The oh, that was upsetting. And I know this is a tradition in sport, or it's kind of more like a tactic in sport, is to, you know, shout or whisper even homophobic slurs into the ears of your your uh, adversaries. But uh, this kind of backfired. Uh, the United States men's match against Mexico was actually cut short on Thursday night because the referee um, uh, was was frankly pissed at the whole stadium. Uh, degenerated into chanting and shouts of homophobic uh, slurs from the Mexican soccer fans. Um, and these are directed, uh, especially at the goalkeepers, apparently, to try and distract them from their, from their task. So they've been trying to, officials have been trying to stamp this practice out with fines and, and, and with bans. And, and now in this match, just finished the game early. Uh, so anyway, US, I believe, was up three goals when the match ended. Um, after, you know, 12 minutes of stoppage time because of this chanting. So, Andy, I hope everyone's happy. Well, uh, okay, let's go to Florida, where we tend to go these days. 
First of all, there's, there's a lawsuit in Florida uh, against their ban on the book Tango Makes Three, which is you know the uh, uh, the book about the gay penguins or the, or the you know that raised a kid. Um, but the College Board said it will not alter its AP psych courses, psychology courses to comply with the state ban on talking about gender identity or sexual orientation right through the 12th grade, which is insane. They said, we learned from our mistakes in the rollout of the uh, African-American studies uh, AP. We will not modify our courses to accommodate restrictions on teaching essential college level topics. The college board said that sexual orientation and gender identity have been a part of the AP course in psych psychology for 30 years. Now, the DeSantis Education Commissioner, Manny Diaz, said uh, he did not want students force-fed radical gender and sexual ideology, echoing, of course, all the right-wing propaganda that's out there. I'm, I'm just appalled. I mean, I actually am, as a former educator, I'm actually appalled that this is happening and, and I'm glad that they've, they've stood up because we're talking about psychology here. We're not talking about, again, this idea that we're in sexually indoctrinating people. I mean, this is, this is education that's meant to help people, like educate them to take care of others. So, uh, wow, headed for the dumbest state, people. You're headed for the dumbest state. Well, in Hernando County, Florida, north of Tampa there, uh, they had a big school board meeting and there were scores of people on our side showing up to tell the board they were destroying the schools with their right-wing anti-LGBTQ agenda. And uh, we, we, we've learned that about 50 teachers in this district alone are resigning at the end of the year. They're not going to get anybody to be able to teach, which is, of course, I guess what they want is to mm. destroy public education. Uh, but one of them stood up at this board meeting. You, you know, you're not going to see his face. The meeting was shot from afar. Uh, and we're going to show you his entire, uh, about a three-minute speech, of what he said to the board. My name is Daniel Scott, and I have proudly worked at Springstead High School for the last three years. In those last three years, I have learned and accomplished a lot. I had great support from my admin and fellow staff members, and through that support, I took on a more rigorous course load. I began teaching AP classes and have found some success in doing so. My AP pass rate last year was above the global average for all students who took the world history exam worldwide. I also took on external responsibilities. I work closely with IB students to aid them in receiving their IB diplomas. I sponsor a club on campus, and I also took on the position of senior class sponsor, which I was motivated to take on after serving as senior class president at Central High School under then principal John Stratton. I love my school and I love the career of education. However, effective a couple weeks ago, I have resigned from my position. The board has discussed earlier today about teacher retention. You've addressed pay, you've addressed certification issues, and you've addressed a lack of mentorship. What you have not addressed are the draconian working conditions that are causing many such as myself to abandon this honored career. As you stated, 83% of teachers in their first three years are leaving the profession. These are not all due to certification issues. I had no shortage of mentorship. I had no issues with my ability to certify. I'm leaving because I feel the board is more interested in removing pride flags and banning literature than they are in protecting us educators. I'm leaving because I don't feel that I can adequately provide a safe environment for my students anymore. I'm leaving because I refuse to work for an organization that sees supporting kids for who they are as indoctrination. I'm leaving because I refuse to teach fabricated history that prioritizes a nationalistic narrative before an accurate one. The attempts to sanitize this profession to fit a political bias is what is causing my departure. Now, I would not call myself a great teacher. I lack a lot of the experience necessary to do so. I certainly would never argue that I was appointed by God to educate. But I will tell you that many of our district's most talented professionals are leaving for similar reasons as I. I am not the first to leave, nor will I be the last. I am not sure a recruiter is going to solve your problems. Students need great teachers to protect them. Teachers need great school board to protect them in these very tumultuous times. Right now, I don't feel that that is the case in Hernando County. If we do not stop witch hunting our most dedicated professionals, we, we will see a death of this profession. Teachers need the freedom to be empathetic human beings, the freedom to teach our content that we are masters of in an honest way without censorship, the parts one doesn't like. We need the freedom to be a safe adult for the students to confide in when they need support. 
Until these changes are made, I believe we will continue to see tur turnover. There will be more. Above all things right now, you must support us, trust us, protect us, or lose us. These are your options. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, fantastic. Wow. Inspiring. I hope he's going to stay in the teaching profession and work elsewhere in a, in, a, in a more accepting state. I mean, here, like in New York, we're trying to expand. Uh, introduction of LGBTQ topics in schools is not easy. We've been working on that forever. Um, there's a lot of resistance, but that's the law now. So, yeah. Oh my God, education depends on finding out about things that you wish you didn't have to. That's why it's called education. Cherry picking the facts to a political agenda is indoctrination, which is exactly what they are doing. It's true. I mean, I mean, you know, I think back on my early education, you know, I went to Catholic school, but in, I mean, you know, I certainly learned how to read and write and everything, but there was, there were certainly large elements of indoctrination not just Catholic, but but in terms of the country and what you're supposed to feel about America and everything that happened. And yeah. now we're giving kids the facts uh, and uh, it makes people uncomfortable. All right, uh, before we move on to some other uh, state news, I, yesterday, uh, sort of an historic day in New York, uh, they dedicated the corner of Fifth Avenue and Washington Square North. They co-named it for marriage equality pioneers, Edie Windsor and Thea Spire, uh, who brought that Supreme Court case, well, Edie did, her spouse was dead, uh, to get federal rights for gay couples. Now, look at that picture. You've got the governor of New York uh, there, uh, is the second from the left, um, and, and next to her is Carolyn Maloney uh, to the far left, and then next to her is Edie Windsor's uh, surviving spouse, Judith Kaysen Windsor, and council members and uh, state senators and Glenda Testone from the community center and everything like that. So it was it was a really, you know, they the a lot of the women who spoke, including the governor and Carol Maloney, they talked about and oh sorry, Tish James is in the back there, our state attorney general. There she is, yes. And they talked about uh Edie Windsor as a mentor. As I mean, Tish James said, she's our Rosa Parks, you know. Wow. Uh, which is, you know, I'm nice to hear a, you know, it was a black woman saying that. Uh, with, wow. With, with but, you know, she was such an inspiration to all these people. Uh, the governor said, you know, I love powerful women who stand up for themselves. And that's what Edie was all about. That is high praise indeed. And thank you to Judith, who continues to, uh, you know, advocate on behalf of Edie and who was behind this. And also, you know, shout out to my adopted home, New York City, which has this fabulous tradition of naming streets and ways and parts of the city after these tra trailblazing people. And listen, uh, Edie and Thea lived in the same building. Uh, there were uh, some other prominent New Yorkers who lived there they could have named this for. Uh, Bella Abzug, the great feminist leader and congresswoman. Ed Koch, not my favorite person, no. uh, who was the mayor. <laughs> and Larry Kramer, who was like the, you know, the founder of ACT UP and GMHC. So it went to, uh, now, you know, I'm going to say this, and this may sound controversial. We did this in the shadow of the Washington Square Arch, where there were two statues of George Washington. Now, all right, he founded the country. Okay, he's a founding father, uh, you know, who was a slaver also. How about taking one of those statues down? Well, one, I'm trying to compromise here and make room for honoring people like Edie and Thea and other great people in the village who have made such a difference to our lives. That's mm. my suggestion. Yeah. All right. All right, uh, let's go back to state news in Nevada, Nevada, excuse me, uh, Representative <laughs> Republican Governor Joe Lombardo vetoed a bill from the Democrat controlled legisl legislature that would have guaranteed a right to contraception. The religious right and Clarence Thomas have contraception in the crosshairs, having ended the right to abortion. Uh, the U.S. House passed a national right to contraception bill last year. When Nancy Pelosi was speaker, but it was filibustered in the Senate. Now, so, I, I, actually, in reading this story, I'm encouraged that some Republican governors, surprisingly in Arkansas, West Virginia, and Indiana, have signed bills protecting contraceptives, but 195 House Republicans voted against it last year. All right, oh uh, I, I'm going to go on to that Michigan story uh, in Grand Rapids at WOOD TV, an NBC affiliate. There's a newsroom rebellion against this guy, news director Stanton Tang, 
who issued a memo to staff to scale back pride coverage and to present both sides in those stories. In other words, mm -hmm. quote the haters in the stories. My friend David Rothenberg calls this getting the Nazi view of Passover. Um, <laughs> Nice. <laughs> and at pride marches, the protests are often by actual neo-Nazi groups these days. Now, Tang is said to get a lot of his, he's the news director, he gets a lot of his ideas from Newsmax and all these right-wing places. And he follows the libs of TikTok. So the, the company that owns this, uh, you know, uh, Nexstar, they're apologizing for this. The newsroom is in total revolt over this and said, we are not gonna abide by this memo. We are gonna cover cover pride, uh, we're, you know, and uh, so it's encouraging that there's been some resistance there. Yeah. Uh, all right, in Texas, Governor Abbott signed a bill, speaking of haters, placing limits on trans athletes, now in college sports. Soon they'll move on to the professional leagues, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. on September 1st. Individuals can sue if trans athletes are allowed to compete on teams that align with their gender identity. But we had better news in Arkansas, didn't we? Uh, with the yeah. federal judge in Arkansas on Tuesday struck down the state's law forbidding medical treatment for children and teenagers seeking gender transitions, uh, blocking what has been the first in a wave of these measures. Um, this, this case has been really closely watched because it could set a precedent, I think, for what the other states do. Um, uh, in terms of transition care for, for minors. Right. This is just so, James Moody. Moody, uh, Jr. Uh, right. Uh, an Obama appointee. Isn't it, that interesting? Yes. I mean, he Thank said, you. he said, uh, Arkansas had not proved the case that treatments are harmful. Rather, the evidence showed that the, pro that the prohibited care uh, improves the mental health and well-being of patients. And the state undermined the interests it claims to be uh, supporting. This is an ACLU case. Thank you, ACLU. Yes. And in St. George, Utah, the U.S. District Court Judge David Nuffer, another Obama appointee, granted a preliminary injunction to a drag show festival, which was denied a permit in a city park. Uh, the judge said the First Amendment ensures all citizens, popular or not, majority or minority, conventional or unconventional, have access to public spaces for public expression. He said public officials and judges are not permitted to make decisions based on personal preference or values. That's mm. what America is supposed to be all supposed, about. Supposed to be. And should we talk about the Trump appointee, Judge James Patrick Hanlon, who blocked most of Indiana's laws against trans, mi trans care for minors? Um, you know, that, that's a very nice surprise, isn't it? Uh, that a Trump Trump there. He's a Trump appointee. Yes, in 2018. So uh, not all bad. Thank goodness for that. But this law known as SEA 480, which Indiana's Republican-controlled legislature passed earlier this year, uh, was meant to prohibit physicians from providing minors with treatments such as puberty blockers, hormone therapy, and surgery um, intended to help them transition. We left the surgery ban in place because we're not yes. almost entirely not asking for that. Yes. Um, but uh, he called the ban sex discrimination, and that requires heightened scrutiny. And he said the yeah. plaintiffs were being denied equal protection under the law. Now, this is the fourth state to block these laws, Florida, mm -hmm. Arkansas, and Alabama, uh, the others. And Oklahoma's attorney general has even agreed not to enforce their ban because there's lit litigation uh, pending. And by the way, speaking of uh, Trump, uh, while he's trans bashing uh, during this campaign, uh, the, he once had trans contestants in his uh, beauty pageant, the Miss Universe pageant, and as recently as 2018, and that's what we've got up on the screen now, 2018, his MAGA website was selling LGBTQ merchandise <laughs> with rainbows spelling out, make America great again. I'm gonna look, at, look at that merch. I mean, can I get that now? If I went to that website now, would that be up there or would that be on eBay now? Maybe. I bet it's really worth something because, I mean, come on. It's just insane. <laughs> All right. He just shifts with the wind. <laughs> well, I, 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 the New York State uh, Education Department is implementing new guidelines 
to assist schools in an effort to support the climate and safety of trans and non-binary people in educational institutions. They were pushed to do this by the state legislature and changes in the human rights law and federal laws protecting trans and gender expansive students. Uh, we already had a big anti-bullying law in, in New York, but this goes uh, farther. Now, what's mm -hmm. going on at Wells Fargo? Oh, Wells Fargo, had a, they did a report. They had done this analysis in honor of Pride Month. And I think the title got me in, The Secret Source, The LGBTQ Plus Community and State Economic Growth Rates. And uh, we, we the choir, won't be uh, surprised to, to learn that it's states with higher concentrations of people who identify as LGBTQ that have higher rates of economic growth, according to the Wells Fargo study. Uh, this was published earlier this month in honor of uh, Pride Month, and it surveyed the uh, gross product of 50 states and DC between 2010 and 2019. Now, researchers uh, have even estimated that these effects should be doubled because since that time, since 2010, there's twice as many people in the nation that identify as LGBTQ. So um, that's pretty impressive. And that isn't news to us, Andy, though, is it? We've seen reports like this before over the years. Yeah, there was this researcher, and I'm, I hope I don't get his name wrong. I believe his last name was Florida. And uh, he did all these studies saying, you want, you want to be an advanced uh, society and, uh, and prosperous and all that kind of stuff? You got to be good to gay people and let them be out and have lots of them in the mix in your city and in your state if you really want that. And these, uh, these places are driving us out. All right. Uh, now, here's a... Washington State, a mm. district judge there, ordered a spa to allow a trans woman to use facilities uh, who uh, have had not undergone bottom surgery. Now, this mm -hmm. is a spa modeled after a sex-segregated spas in Korea, where patrons go through a cleansing naked. Uh, the spa cited their Christian faith in rejecting the trans patron. I'm sure that's going to be played up quite a bit by the right wing, but that's what the law says in Washington state. Mm. Olympus in, Spa. In Burlington, Massachusetts, uh, at, a, at Marshall Simmons Middle School, students disrupted a pride event, tearing down banners, just like they did, did in Sheridan Square the other day, in the little Stonewall Monument, uh, chanting, USA are my pronouns. Oh, brother. And... <laughs> wearing red, <laughs> white, and blue face paint. It's very tribal. The principal <laughs> said he's sorry it turned into a day of intolerance. Okay, but Andy, how much has this got to do with the proximity to Boston? Because Boston people can be a little, Boston young people can be a little yeah. feisty, I've noticed. So, That's you know. Any generalizations, there's good and bad. <laughs> I like to say there's good and bad everywhere. <laughs> In California, though, the, the assembly voted nine to one to advance a constitutional amendment that would remove Prop 8 language from the constitution. Prop 8, the citizens there voted in 2008 to ban same-sex marriage, and it took the Supreme Court decisions, you know, uh, Ober you know uh, Windsor and Obergefell, Obergefell uh, to get that. So anyway, it will be, it'll ap appear on the ballot in November 2024. Next year. So, yeah, next year. Oh, God, mm -hmm. time is running out. Time is running out. Now, I, I mentioned some poll, polling that is mm. kind of disturbing. So for the first time in the, in the uh, Gallup poll, um, where they asked whether gay or lesbian relations are morally acceptable, acceptable. now back in 2000, only 40% said yes, it was acceptable. It got up to 71% in 2022, but with all this right-wing stuff that goes on all the time, uh, they knocked it down a notch. We're down to 64% in terms mm. of what people feel. Mike Signorelli says it's not a diminishment of support. The, the haters have created a space where when people are talking to pollsters, they feel more free to express their prejudices. That's what this interpretation is. I think so, and I think also when people are doing well, they feel more generous about people that they consider minorities. And when people are really doing it tough, they look for minorities to blame. And I think that's the space we're in right now. And, the, and then there's the Pew poll, uh, 61%, excuse me, 60% say business owners should not have to provide services to LGBTQ people 
if it conflicts with their beliefs, religious or otherwise, uh, about us. Now, in the poll, they use the example of wedding websites, which is the one before the Supreme Court that we're going to be hearing about momentarily. Uh, so I, I think that's, you know, that's an extreme, I want to say it's an extreme example, but, you know, it's a put up job case. And then back to the Pew poll, support for same sex marriage here is at 63%. But the highest levels of support are in Western Europe. The highest is in Sweden. 92% of Swedes support same sex marriage. Even 74% of Italians, where it's not legal. Uh, the worst in the world, Nigeria, 1%, Indonesia, 3%, Kenya, 3%. Um, and there are big Muslim populations there in Nigeria and in the Indonesia. And now we see the spectacle of the United States right wing, which bashed Muslims forever after 9-11, right? Now they're courting them as social conservatives that they can line up uh, if they're against gay rights. Uh, in, okay, let's go to... Can we go to Montana? Yeah, please. You know, so this case is very interesting to me. So my forebears come from Montana. So to me, in my head, it's like this wild frontier, you know, where you can do what you want. So this this guy in Montana, he's now being sentenced to 18 years in prison for trying to kill all the LGBT people in, in his town, not just some. He thinks they all should go. And, and, and this is now a federal hate crime and firearm charge related to his self-described mission to just rid the town of Basin of its lesbian, queer, and gay community. Officials have said the man's name is John Russell Howald, uh, who was convicted in February for firing an AK-style rifle into the home of a woman who openly identified as lesbian. Um, she was just inside uh, her home being herself, and he thinks he's killed her, so off he goes and looks for somebody else to uh, uh, shoot. When he was found, he was armed with two assault rifles, a hunting rifle, two pistols, and multiple high-capacity magazines that were taped together for faster loading, the, um, the authorities have said. So um, this is, to me, an example of this mindset where you end up on the wrong side of, you know, your own community, and uh, you go into vigilante mode, I suppose, is, is what... Uh, what you call this, um, he said he wanted to clean his town. And I find that language incredibly disturbing. That's, that's and Nazi stuff. But let's talk about, how, first of all, by the way, this guy howled. He, was, he previously did prison time for beheading a dog. <laughs> Quite a character. But how? let's talk about how he got caught. After he does the first shooting, he's gone down the street. This is a small town of 200 people. He runs into uh, some church people coming out of church, including the pastor, and they recognized him, and they started to talk to him. And he said what he was doing. I'm going to rid this place of, of, of gay people. And mm -hmm. so the pastor had been recording his own sermon that day, so he had the recorder on, and that's how they really were able to completely convict him of this crime. Oh, God. Speaking of crimes, uh, Republicans, including Ron DeSantis, say when they have the power, they will restore the racist names of military bases, such as Fort Bragg, a Confederate general, widely considered the least successful military commander in the lost cause of the Civil War. It is, it's now named Fort Liberty. DeSantis calls that political correctness, and Pence echoed him. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's based on a, pick your battles, DeSantis. That's what I want to say. Pick your damn battles, because this is a very lame naming convention it's called fort bragg because it's near where he lived and not even his own troops liked him apparently so what are we what are we fighting for exactly. it's crazy they're fighting for racial segregation and white supremacy that's what they're fighting for in north yeah. carolina city councilman in apex north carolina scott lassiter is suing the anti-lgbtq speaker of the north carolina house representative tim moore I have a picture of him there for having an affair with his wife and engaging in group sex with other people seeking political favor with the speaker. Lassiter's wife admitted that the affair had gone on for three years, as did Moore in a meeting with Lassiter. Lassiter is suing for alienation of affections. I will say Mrs. Lassiter, who separated from Scott, says their marriage was a nightmare. But this is a, one of these anti-LGBTQ people who's enjoying group sex and having affairs. So leave us alone. Leave us alone. Take your own stinking values and 
Get away. Marriage is marriage. And I like that. North Carolina is one of the few states that you can actually sue for alienation of affection, but it's a thing. A thing. In Concord, New Hampshire, a drag story hour hosted by Juicy Garland monthly at the Teetotler Cafe was attacked by neo-Nazis. We have video of oh. oh, yeah. Rich, enough of that. We've, like, we get it. And notice I, the, they're cowards. They're all wearing masks. It's terrifying to me, Andy. This is Concord, New Hampshire. It's, I've been there. It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful town. Why are these youngish men acting like this? It's incredible to me to see this. Well, uh, Juicy Garland says uh, she uh, prevailed and had a great time. And that was had by the families, but the Nazi stuff is it's extremely chilling. And golly, golly, I didn't order those, she said. God love her. Now, what do you think about what Glad is saying about Twitter? I listen, I think they're right on. I mean, they've been saying for some time that none of the social media platforms are, are safe. And of course they're not. They're run by late stage capitalist heterosexual white men with, you know, megalomania complexes, as I said before in our intro to you, Andy. We we can't trust them. Uh, but she has said, uh, Sarah Kate, Sarah Kate um, the fabulous president of GLAAD, have said that Twitter is by far the worst. And especially since Elon Musk has taken over, it is not a safe space for anybody. Um, on the scorecard, Glad said it is the most dangerous platform for LGBTQ people, and the only one that saw its scores decline from last year to thirty-three percent, down from forty-five percent a year ago. Okay, I want to talk about a couple of non-LGBTQ deaths of icons uh, this week, uh, both dedicated human rights leaders. Daniel Ellsberg, of course, uh, who died at 92, he leaked the Pentagon Papers about the Vietnam War, exposed the corruption behind our war in Vietnam. Uh, you know, the fact that the leaders knew we were losing and knew the war was wrong, but kept doing it anyway. He was a military analyst. He became a lifelong peace activist and the most famous whistleblower of all time. And the Supreme Court held six to three uh, that... Um, Newspapers had the right to publish those papers. It was a great victory for freedom of the press. Henry Kissinger was responsible for the deaths of thousands of Cambodians, among other war crimes, and he once called Ellsberg the most dangerous man in America. Kissinger sadly still lives. Ellsberg was arrested at 90 civil disobedience actions against war and against uh, nukes. Yeah, so... Andy, Freedom can you connect the dots for me? I want to know, do you feel that there was some direct influence of Ellsberg and this kind of loosening of information and our civil rights movement with the LGBTQ community? Well, I mean, you know, we're inspired by anybody who stands up for the truth, which is what we've been trying to get out about ourselves. Don't forget, it was a complete, I mean, you know, the New York Times published the the, the Pentagon Papers, they wouldn't publish anything about us for a long time. I mean, you know, it's all about getting information out and getting uh, so that people get to get to know us and get to know what's really going on. I mean, that would be the connection that I would make. But I mean, he was just somebody who stood up for justice and he was an inspiration to many of us. As was Glenda Jackson, uh, the famous uh, uh, actor, 87 years old, uh, passed away, star of stage screen, and the UK Parliament. Uh, Two early roles where she had relationships with bisexual men, The Music Lovers, where she was Tchaikovsky's wife, uh, and she played, uh, and my favorite uh, one of hers, Sunday Bloody Sunday. Um, she also won an Oscar for Larry Kramer's adaptation of G.H. Lawrence's Women in Love, which also featured lots of homoeroticism. When she played Ophelia on the stage in Hamlet, she was so fierce that a reviewer said she should have been playing Hamlet. Uh, Late in life, she played King Lear himself, and this yes. is only within the last couple of years. She won the Tony Award for Edward Albee's Three Tall Women uh, on Broadway, and 
her, I think her greatest performance was when Margaret Thatcher died. She mm -hmm. got up in Parliament and she, without any notes, she gave a speech on the occasion of Margaret Thatcher's death that read this kind of monster, uh, the Riot Act. It was so terrific. I, I, I think I'll link to it in the, in the, uh, in the notes this week. Um, because, you know, she said Margaret Thatcher destroyed everything that she held dear or that Brit British people used to hold dear. Mm -hmm. uh, she also narrated uh, the docu documentary of the 1966 book, The Microcosm on LGBTQ themes just last year, which is about a lesbian bar, Gate Gateways. You know about oh that? yeah, Gateways is a very famous, very famous bar in the UK. It's where the killing of Sister George was set. Oh. Um, I mean, for gay women, Glenda Jackson, we value her because she is a strong woman and an unconventional woman. All right. So should we go to some international news? Or... Sure. Um, yes. talk, talk about what's going on in Uganda. Well, um, nothing good for our community, as, as we know, but the U.S. has finally made a stand and has imposed visa restrictions on anti-LGBTQ Ugandan politicians who might want to come here. Um, after the African nation passed, as we know, an anti-LGBTQ law, which is basically the kill the gays law, that has been condemned by many countries and the United Nations and, of course, the U.S. State Department. Um, this law is considered one of the harshest in the world. It's been enacted in May of this year for what they're calling aggravated homosexuality, which is, is uh, such a broad term. It's such a dangerous term. It's like saying aggravated race, you know, in, in my book. But this would include transmitting HIV through gay sex, things like this. And, of course, uh, the, the West has complained that this is inhuman. Uh, so this is what the U.S. State Department has done. So thank you. See if that makes a named, difference. We haven't named the names publicly yet, but no. people have been told. And you know, it was a big story this week. There's not much hope for the Ugandan opposition to the president for life, Museveni. Uh, uh, Ugandan rebels based in the Congo stormed a school across the border and murdered 37 students by burning it, burning them, burning them alive, and the staff. Just uh, so, uh, not much hope. Um, <clears throat> Uh, by the way, Saudi Arabia, speaking of atrocities, which just took over the PGA Tour and put me off professional golf, is expecting, excuse me, is executing seven men who allegedly committed crimes as minors, including one who was 12 years old when he committed this alleged crime, and they're going to put him to death. Six were sentenced on terrorism-related charges, which in Saudi Arabia means criticizing the government. Amnesty says they were convicted under unfair trials, barred by torture, tainted confessions. And none of these are related to uh, LGBTQ identity, I, I hope, although we, we don't really know, do we? Because some of the charges could be trumped up. They do have the death penalty there for just plain old homosexuality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Rishi Sunak, the prime minister of the United Kingdom. Here he is. He was recorded at a party conference mocking trans women, making fun of the liberal Democratic leader, Ed Davey, saying Davey was trying to convince everybody that women clearly had penises. Raucous laughter from many in the party, although younger members who were present were said to look uncomfortable. The Tories have uh, retreated on trans rights, as have many right-wing governments in the world, Sunak plans to rewrite the Equality Act to bar trans women from single-sex spaces, including sports. He also had the UK Parliament take the unprecedented step of overturning the Scottish Parliament's Gender Recognition Act in January. What a creep. What a creep. And when he was um, uh, pressed for, when he's, uh, Downing Street was pressed for comment, they basically said, well, it's consistent with everything else he said thus far, which I... Oh, it was incredible. No apology there. <laughs> but Marin, you have better news from Queensland, Australia. I do. And I hope you, you all aren't getting bored with the Aussie news uh, whenever I come on. But, but it is interesting, I think, to sometimes look at what's happening down there. Uh, in Queensland, Australia, which I say very affectionately, is our kind of Texas, Florida, but nicer. Um, no, but it is, uh, it's, it's sort of got a mixed, mixed uh, history of being a little bit 
freedom seeking a little bit discriminatory or conservative uh, Queensland you know there's a clue uh, but in great news for transgender people the Queensland government has passed reforms allowing how parents identify gender wise on birth certificates they can be the mothers they can be two fathers or they can just be parent uh, and also the new law allows uh, trans and gender diverse people to change the sex listed on their own uh, birth certificate without the need for gender reassignment. And, and by the way, that is what's happening around Australia, except for one state, hold out, New South Wales, which doesn't make sense to me because it's our most progressive and popular state. We'll see what happens there. And we've got good news from Estonia. The parliament passed the Marriage Equality Act there, 55 to 34, becoming the 35th country to do so and the first Baltic state to do so. It's a nation of 1.3 million people. Uh, Same-sex marriage is commenced on January 1st. The center-right prime minister, uh, Kadja Kalas, said, this is a decision that does not take anything away from anyone, but gives something important to many. I am proud of Estonia. Country oh, already so have registered right. partnerships, and they will continue registered partnerships. Uh, the, by the way, the president of Latvia's parliament, as we reported, Edgars uh, Rinkovic, uh, is openly gay. But I'm yeah. oh, sorry, Estonia. Estonia, and I want them to win the next Eurovision Song Contest. How about that? I hope they try. Okay. Uh, Cameroon, the country's communication council, now prohibits LGBTQI scenes on television, promising punishment for violations. Uh, like Ron DeSantis, they're especially upset about Disney for integrating LGBTQ characters into cartoons. Take us to Poland. Oh, it's chilling, isn't it? Isn't it just chilling? Um, Poland, this was a little bit of good news. Uh, thousands, tens of thousands, some people say, marched in Warsaw for LGBT rights. This is ahead of the elections that are planned for later this year in October or November. Uh, this was Warsaw's Pride Parade on Saturday. And uh, the country's right-wing government will focus, of course, on anti-LGBTQ ideology as they have, have done in previous campaigns. So this turnout is considered to be a demonstration against that as an expectation of reality, which I think is nice. Uh, Warsaw's mayor vowed that the LGBTQ community would always be safe. Um, and I hope that you all will be safe in Poland. Rafael, uh, now I'm going to pronounce this right, uh, Rakowski from the Liberal Opposition Party told crowds. Same-sex relationships, as you would know, are not legal in Poland, and the country's already banned uh, LGBTQ adoption. Okay. Uh, in Japan, they passed a watered-down LGBTQ understanding bill, whatever the hell that means, with no human rights guarantees and tacit endorsement of some forms of discrimination. All it says is that there should be no unfair discrimination. <laughs> well, I can tell you what it means. They don't want... Uh, marriage equality in Japan, of course. But what Japan is doing really at the moment is uh, they're under pressure from the Group of Seven. They're the only country in the G7 alliance that doesn't have full uh, rights for LGBTQ people or same-sex marriage. So this is their kind of uh, token conciliatory gesture. They rushed the bill. They only got it approved a day before the uh, a convention happened in May. Uh, so it's just sort of tokenistic. I know LGBT rights activists in Japan are very disappointed by this, but they also see that it's a good sign, somewhat encouraging, because at least it's being discussed now. And while, while uh, marriage equality hasn't been passed, the politicians have admitted that they see the discrimination and well, was, they acknowledge it. Well, there was one pro-LGBTQ legislator who said it would have been better if they had done nothing. That's mm. how bad it was. So we'll see. Uh, we'll do you see. have any other international news? No, I think that's no, it for now. A brief AIDS note. Whack-a-doodle uh, uh, Democratic candidate for president, RFK Jr., Robert Kennedy Jr., who's polling about 20% uh, to Joe Biden, is claiming that poppers cause AIDS. Poppers. And that kids are being made trans from exposure to chemicals in the environment. Now, I realize... There are some of you who might want to send a message to Joe Biden in the primary by voting for somebody else, but don't do it this way, uh, you know, and uh, and validate all of this hateful stuff. Okay. Can I just say he's got some things really wrong? I mean, that's an obscure journal from 1999 that said there might be a connection between uh, Kaposi's sarcoma or the use of poppers 
and the, the rate at which you are more likely to contract HIV, it's like he scrambled it in his brain, just like his comment about pesticides are turning boys transgender. Uh, that, again, goes to something from a, a national government site which said that too many pollutants in the atmosphere can unbalance the uh, endocrine, endocrinal balance in humans. So he, he's taking these small little pieces of, you know, knowledge or investigative knowledge and he's he's turning them around into something why he's a democrat what's he doing okay let's we're down to our last five minutes let's do some entertainment news Yay. all right uh hbo by the way has the their rock hudson da documentary premiering on june 28th rock hudson all that heaven allowed i'll be tuning in for that um what's going on at the la jolla playhouse Oh, a play about Billie Jean King. I want to see how that works. Um, I just keep thinking, you know, tennis. So, but it is by the legendary Anna Devere Smith. So if anyone can pull that off, it will be her. Uh, apparently she, she kind of um, uh, brings into discourse a lot of the personalities in Billie Jean's uh, life and her uh, trailblazing uh, career as a champion tennis player, including I'd love to see what she does with Margaret Court's voice. That would be and interesting. That, and that's her with, with the entire cast and crew there of the play, which is called Love All. Uh, nice. Christian Cooper series on Nat Geo Wild, Extraordinary Birder, watched it this week in the premiere. It's up and running. Uh, and his enthusiasm and wonder and humor uh, on discovering new birds is quite infectious. Uh, the first episode took place in Puerto Rico. He's also got his book out, Better Living Through Birding. Um, he, al he also incorporated into this Nat Geo special uh, a pride message uh, about same-sex relationships in the wild kingdom. You know, I mean, it was, you know, and it was great that they included that and they integrated that, not just because it's Pride Month. So congratulations, Chris. Yes. How about that Elton John? He says he's no longer going to do residencies with his farewell tour in America because we've become so horrible on LGBTQ rights. You ought to look oh, at Jason just... Sunak there over in the United Kingdom too. I'm like, boo, Elton, don't punish us. Don't punish the people that have supported you. You know, come and, come and be an ambassador. How about that? Uh, I want to alert people about a photo exhibit in New York. It's called A District Defined Streets, Sex and Survival uh, in the Meatpacking District. Uh, I'm going to be uh, dropping by there. It's at 401 West 14th Street at a place called 401. It's, and uh, I'm going to include all the information in our email. And uh, I went to the New York uh, LGBTQ Center's garden party last night as the center turns 40. And, you know, I'm gonna, well, we're going to, as we go out, we'll, go, we'll show you some of these pictures. There's our friend Chef Juan and Michael Swirsky. I can't identify everybody in these pictures, but it's a wonderful thing out in the open air. Everybody's happy. Everybody's smiling uh, and having a great time. A very, very uh, good, oh, there's Kathy and Marino Thomas and Sheila and Marino Thomas. There's Rich Wandel, stay on him for a second. That's the guy who used to run the, uh, who, uh, the, the archive at the LGBTQ Community Center uh, and, and many others as well as we just flip through these pictures. Uh, at, well, oh, there's uh, Ted Snowden, the great uh, the theatrical producer and Fred Carger uh, who ran mm. for president. And there's uh, uh, Randy Weingarten there in the middle, the head of the Teachers mm -hmm. Union nationally, and her wife uh, there on the right, uh, mm -hmm. Rabbi Sharon Kleinbaum. So mm -hmm. uh, you know, great time was had by all. It's a beautiful event, I have to say, one of my favorites, uh, during summer or pride. Were you there last night? No, I was there last year, though. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to get over. It's quite close to me. I was able to walk. Uh, yeah. there up to about 36th Street or 37th Street. So what else, what else have you, we had a minute, what else have you got planned for uh, this week? I think we should let Miriam Margolis take us out oh, because please. when do you get an 82-year-old lesbian posing nude in British Vogue? Now, well, not quite nude, and this is very Margolis uh, style, but shout out to, to Miriam. Uh, she's, a, she's a national trinket in England, as they would say. In Australia, she's a national treasure. She's been featured in British Vogue's Pride Issue. Uh, she said some zingers here, which I, I love. She came out in 1966 in the UK when it was still illegal. I mean, she could have been locked up and jailed, but she didn't care. And this Jewish lesbian, she said, I never had any shame about being gay or anything really, um, because it was me. 
I couldn't be criminal because it's who I am. I think gay people are very lucky because we are not conventional. We're a group of slightly apart. It gives us an edge. We're good artists. We're good musicians. And I like being gay. I wouldn't want to be straight for anything. We, we love her. I've encountered her a couple of times when I'm in London, and she is, uh, she is fearless. <laughs> Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you Thanks, next week. Guys. Again. Happy and Pride. Happy, Happy Pride. Stay Happy safe. Happy Liberation Day. Okay, we got to go to the other link.